You guys aren't convinced that high speed two makes economic sense for Britain? Well, we're very convinced that we need to invest more money in rail infrastructure. We're disappointed that there's no overall strategy for rail and road, uh, an integrated strategy over the next decade or so. Um, as far as HS2 is concerned, it's a 50 billion project. If you actually put that in 2014 money, it's 56.6 .6 billion. Uh, the, gov the government's case rests on two points. First of all, that there is a lack of capacity and that uh, the existing rail, uh, the West Coast Main Line, will be unable to cope with the demand and secondly that this will rebalance the UK economy. The information that's on the, in the public domain does not support the uh, capacity argument. Uh, HS, uh, the, um, the West Coast Main Line long distance is about 43% utilisation and rises to 50, between 50 and 60 for peak time. Yes, there is a problem immediately after the end of uh, peak time on Friday and when football matches take place. And there's also a problem, as indeed there is with most other lines, of crowding coming into London. So that case is not made. As far as the um, uh, rebalancing the economy, the evidence from other countries is it's the capital city that really benefits the most. Uh, that's not to say that other cities don't benefit, but what would really, what, what comes through in the evidence that we took is that regional uh, transport networks, improving regional transport networks, can drive growth. And uh, we believe that the government should look closely at the Trans Pennine, Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, and Hull route as potentially something which should um, be prioritised. I think a lot of people that commute into the capital, though, would like to see money spent more on commuter lines rather than lines that reach out to the rest of the country. I, how do you answer that? Well, uh, we're talking about rebalancing the UK economy. One particular imbalance is the amount of money that's spent. £2,600 per head is what the expenditure on infrastructure in London and the South East is going to be over the coming years, and that compares with £199 for the North West. So I think there's some important rebalancing and investment in the, uh, in the regions that needs to take place. There are some that suggest that maybe what we should do is start the high-speed rail network, not from London, but from the other end, and, and see it sort of going from north to south, if, if you get my drift. I, is there any yeah. sort of economic rationale behind that? I think there is some economic rationale, and I believe that has been considered. Um, what we're saying is that there's time between now and when the hybrid bill co goes through both houses, which will be by the end of 2016, for the next government to look in detail at some of these alternatives, of which that is one, the Trans Pennine route is another. And frankly, there are some alternative ways of dealing with, the, with capacity problems, which are already proven and well tried, such as um, increasing the length of trains, changing first class carriages into standard class carriages putting in-cab signalling in, which is widely used on the continent and in the London Underground, which allows trains to travel closer together, and therefore we get more trains on the line. So there are a lot of alternatives to be looked at uh, to ensure that this investment is the best value for money for the UK, because after all, it's the largest investment we've made for many, many years. Why invest in rail at all? Why not invest in road? Uh, there are quite ex extensive road uh, road plans that are um, in the, in the government's um, in the tr Department for Transport's uh, sites. But you actually raise a, a key point, which is that we don't have an integrated transport strategy which determines whether we should be investing in road or rail, and if so, which projects should be prioritised over the other uh, over others. Governments talk and have talked for many many years about having an integrated transport strategy, but so far it, none has arrived. Um, interest rates are incredibly cheap at the moment, incredibly low at the moment. The cost of money is almost zero. Isn't there a huge economic case that just says, you know what, with money so cheap for so long, the UK should be investing massively in, in infrastructure in, in its all possible forms at this stage? Uh, I think the low interest rate environment, particularly for long-term uh, 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 long interest rates, is indeed very attractive for infrastructure projects. But you come back to the value for money. The public subsidy involved in this on 2011 prices is £31.5 That has to be paid by all taxpayers, many of whom will never travel on this railway. And therefore, one has to be satisfied that the taxpayers' money is being wisely, wisely invested and wisely spent. And I think that comes back to an evaluation of which of the alternatives might actually offer a better value for money proposition. Given the political investment that has already taken place, 
How much traction, Lord Hollick, do you think you'll get with this report? Well, we should wait for the new government to give us their response. I would hope that they will seize the opportunity of the timetable that's, uh, uh, for, for the enabling bill to go through both houses of parliament, which they say takes us through until the end of next year, to actually dig deep, to dive deep into some of these issues, to look again at the capacity, on, on the capacity argument, we're uh, all struggling because the Department for Transport has, for reasons of commercial confidentiality, been, uh, been unable to share with us current passenger usage data. And therefore, we're unable to, to, to verify whether or not the, the um, uh, capacity um, uh, case that's been put forward by the government is plausible. And secondly, the government uh, has itself accepted that much of the, uh, the um, analysis is based on um, out, what is now out-of-date assumptions going back to the 1990s. They are currently reviewing that. And, of course, one has to really think also about the future. And Rod Eddington, in his report in 2006, pointed out that high-speed broadband would also, be, uh, a, a, would also have an impact on long-distance travel. And I think one needs to proceed with that uh, thought very much in mind. Lord Hollick, thank you very much indeed for your time. The Chairman of the House of Lords Economic Affairs Committee.